All right, you will know here where the uh, fluorine has just been introduced that there is a distinct stimulation of all the cells as they react to the poison. This we take to be a defense mechanism. Then it be things begin to slow up and reproduction is definitely inhibited. Here we have another a demonstration of uh, the uh, destruction of cells by a perfusion of one part in 30 million. Notice the swelling of the mitochondria in the body of the cells. Notice the compaction of the uh, material in the center or vital spot, which we call the nucleus of the cells. That too is evidence of injury. Note the swelling of the membranes around the cells. This makes it impossible for them to absorb foodstuff. Note they're shriveling up now. There are no cells dividing. All is becoming still. Most of the cells are dead or dying. This demonstrates the toxicity of this material. In summary, I wish to make it very clear again that this film, which you have just seen, is a graphic record of what we and Drs. Berry and Trillwood have seen in our cultures when they were perfused with dilute solutions of sodium fluoride. This film itself is presented here only to show that mammalian cells in tissue cultures can be and are damaged by fluorides, and some even killed when their contact with sodium fluoride is in the concentration of one part in 30 million. And we do have photographic records showing almost the same thing in one part in 60 million. Poisonous sodium fluoride in these concentrations may not be toxic enough to kill the cells or to destroy an organ or possibly the individual himself. Nevertheless, in human body, such poisons are subtle, insidious, and if prolonged over months and years, as in this case where fluoridated water is being used, chronic disorders and upsets of function in one or more of the vital organs may ensue. Hi guys, I'm Ted Camp for Urban Survival Strategies. Hey, uh, the other day I had a talk with someone that uh, you know made me start made me start thinking that a lot of people who are involved with prepping, you know, really don't understand the um, you know the use of the plants and things that are around them. Not not only as wild edibles, but they're medicinal uses as well. So I thought that I'd like to issue a uh, video challenge to my subscribers or anybody else that watches this video. And uh, you know just show some of the some of the plants in your area not only that can be you know considered wild edibles but what the medicinal uses is. Uses is? Uses are. <laughs> the uh, and I don't mean just like this, you know, orange tree behind me over here, but something like the uh, loquat tree that you can see here. I made another video today where I was using leaves from this for something else, but uh, these leaves, let me grab the camera. The leaves of the loquat have been used for medicinal purposes for, God, hundreds if not thousands of years mainly for um, stomach ailments, you know, nausea, you know, gastrointestinal problems, vomiting, uh, you know, all that kind of thing. But uh, these leaves can be dried out, broken up, and uh, used in a tea. They actually have a pretty good flavor to them. 
and they contain a lot of antioxidants. You know, this is a this tree's getting older now, but I I use the leaves from this thing all the time. But I had encountered someone the other day that uh, although we live in an area where there are citrus trees everywhere, you know, but you only have access to that citrus for a limited period of time you know, out of the year. But he was storing um, uh, vitamin C tablets, quite a few of them. And I asked him, you know, what are you going to do when those things run out? You know, if, uh, if it's an all hell breaks loose kind of, kind of thing or shift scenario, you know, where are you going to get your vitamin C? And, you know, he couldn't answer that. And my wife was kind enough to tell him that, well, you know, you can extract vitamin C from the pine needles, you know, just boil them, make a tea. You know, just a small amount actually contains five times the vitamin C of a single lemon. But it occurred to me that there's probably a lot of people out there who uh, are getting involved with prepping that, that don't know that or know much about wild plants at all. Hi guys, me again. Um, just going to do a video quickly about um, a good method of storing and transporting uh, kindling uh, in your survival kit or bag out back, that sort of thing. Now, the best tip I've seen on the internet or on YouTube is the use of Vaseline jelly, um, which is petroleum jelly, you can get it anywhere. Um, we all know that cotton wool burns quite well, makes very good kindling. Um, what you can also do to make this better and even use it as a, uh, you can even use um, something that sparks, like a, a, a striking stick. Um, if you dab a little bit of your petroleum jelly into the um, cotton wool, You can see how quickly and how much longer that burns. Um, if you have any comments, please let me know. Um, it's a good little tip. You can store pre soaked um, cotton wool in a small bag like this. You can see how much longer this, um, this, this cotton wool burns. Um, so it's much better for kindling that way. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, January 4th, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube, if you'd like to visit, it's ddarko2012. Oh, okay, I have this first article up. It's from January 3rd. Order seeds now. I um, included this in my, not the last set of videos, but the one before, about five items. And one of them was, uh, you know, basically some packs of seeds and stuff like that. But it goes on here and it says considerations when ordering seeds, what area of the country do these seeds thrive in? It says here some seed sites, which are down below, or catalogs will also give information like uh, produce is well in hot or humid climates. Can I double crop in one season? Uh, talking about allowing you to grow twice as much food in one spot. Which seeds are cool weather and which are warm weather? Are these open pollinated seeds? How many seeds will I need to fill an allotted space? Last one is, what about herbs for seasoning, teas, and homeopathic remedies? He said this is one of my focuses for this year. I want to establish good stands of mint and bee balm, among others. He goes, when should I order? Now, because there's actually shortages, and I'm going to cover that in this video. There's actually a um, corn seed shortage right now. Uh, well, that would probably be the last one that I would go for. But it says, what companies carry good seeds? You can go in there, Baker Creek, uh, Heirloom Seeds, Territorial Seed Company. So the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Uh, why this vitamin is better than any vaccine and improves your immune system by three to five times. You can go in there and watch that video, but basically it says vitamin D is more powerful than any vaccine you could ever take. And he's basing this off a German study. Goes in there and says vitamin D increases your immune function by three to five times while dramatically stimulating the production of potent antimicrobial peptides. Goes on there and says the ultraviolet radiation exposure from sun, which stimulates the production of vitamin D in your skin, has been shown to reduce the incidences of viral respiratory infections along with wide range other health conditions. It says vitamin D is a hormone and not a vitamin. It says here there's never been a disease that is caused by vaccine deficiency, but 
are diseases that are caused by vitamin D deficiency, many of them ranging from cancer to depression. You can go in there and check that out. Uh, next up, I have natural remedies to avoid depression this winter without using medicinal drugs. And the first one up is our friend vitamin D or the hormone D. It says a depression which occurs annually during the winter as well as feelings of depression which deepen during this period are related to lack of vitamin D which is delivered in its most powerful form through the sunshine. So it goes in there and basically says vitamin D uh, increases brain levels of serotonin which has been called the happiness hormone followed by St. John's wort and they go on and say a balanced lifestyle. Take care of your lifestyle. Remain healthy and active throughout the winter months. Avoid eating too many comfort foods as many of these do not travel easily through the digestive tract leaving the body constipated and with an overall sluggish feeling. Ask the Outback Doc what medical supplies do most people overlook and you can go in there and um, check out some of the more sophisticated ones but uh, I'll just name a few the high filtration face mask respirator uh, followed by security in your own treatment area being able to live and work in a secure area is a must for the melodramas that come with an urgent emergency medical case followed by what acquire the practice and medical skills and ability knowledge count and this stuff you know you can go in there and check that out but suction devices and Foley catheters and stuff like that but I'll just like I said, I'll move on. Bullion cubes to mix with water for an electrolyte solution to drink uh, when very ill. Antibiotics will be a must-have in many post-collapse uh, scenarios. Going on here, fluids. Pedialyte is best, not Gatorade. Over-the-counter medications. Or like you know, saw in the earlier video, you can pick up a book like of the field, stuff like that, or different manuals in that of uh, what, are medicinal, what medicinal plants are out there and what they'll do for you. Because I did see another video where a prepper um, had, you know, some things like peanut butter or something like that. But then he had, like, vitamin C tablets. And I don't really plan on doing that. I actually do the pine needles right outside my house for vitamin C. So moving on, we have here FDA draws criticism after a U-turn on antibiotics and animal feed. It says environmental groups dismayed after agency drops long-held plan to regulate use of human antibiotics fed to healthy animals. Now this was, what, December 29th, 2011. But then just today, January 4th, FDA do ban some antibiotics for livestock, ban some uses of the class of antibiotics on livestock out of concern that bacteria that sickens humans are being uh, becoming resistant to the drug. That's pretty interesting because I was mentioned that uh, four years ago when I was going to college and they had the factory farms uh, representative uh, come. Well, they were against factory farms, but they were speaking about it at our class. And uh, I had did an, did an article on that about the whole antibiotics and, and staph infections and MRSA and that and how uh, people were getting over um, uh, too many antibiotics and a lot of it was becoming uh, coming from their food. So it's kind of interesting right there. Moving on here, the billion dollar pest U.S. beetle is developing resistance to one of the most widely used genetically modified crops, say scientists. Crop pests appear to have developed resistance to an insect toxin inserted into GMO corn plants. You can go in there for the petition link. Uh, tell the White House to say no to Dow's chemical agent orange GMO corn. So just like the Federal Reserve Act over Christmas, Dow had filed a petition to deregulate the GM corn variety known as DAS402789 that is resistant to 2,4-D, which, which also means the agro-giant intends to deregulate the 2,4-D, which has been banned since the 1970s. So farmers' corn seed shortage sows Farm Belt woes, said it was down 25% to 50% of ahead of this planting season. GM Foods touted benefits are actually false claims. And it says here they're in today's food supply. In fact, GMOs are so prominent that if a product is not labeled as GMO-free, then it could be assumed that there is at least some amount of genetic alteration within the food. Some of those claims for benefits are what? GM crops require less herbicide pesticide usage, which we just talked about. GM Foods will help provide uh, for the poor, starving populations, which is what is keeping the eugenicists up at night worrying about uh, feeding people. GM foods are normal foods because there's no threat to your health and can even be nutritionally enhanced. We have Monsanto GMO seeds use to further expand Within the United States, BPA may cause arrhythmia, heart attacks in women. So military personnel are using the synthetic marijuana to sidestep drug tests, and the companies that produce it are uh, altering the recipes to sidestep a ban on it. And pot smoking not tied to mental decline.